Well, the latest things going on using the same machine that I was so excited about uh, when we last spoke is showing some evidence of the brain after minor traumatic injury. And we have a lot of men and women coming back from the battlefield. They've been exposed to explosive devices. They've been knocked unconscious. And sometimes when you've had a little time unconscious and you're coming back from a war zone, it's hard to distinguish whether you have post-traumatic stress disorder or minor traumatic brain injury. The, the usual brain imaging devices, the MRI, the CAT scan, they, they pick up areas of the brain that have been damaged. Um, and it's relatively gross in the case of traumatic brain injury. You know, you've had a bleed in the brain, you've had swelling in part of the brain, you have a part of the brain that shows up on these more traditional brain imaging devices as being overactive, underactive. But the MEG is a different machine. It's the magnetoencephalogram. It's a computerized EEG. It's picking up brain waves. And so in the minor traumatic brain injury, there's some differences in how the electrons flow over the highways of the neuron. There's a part of the neuron called an axon. It's thin, it's long, it's, it's a pathway. And for the first time, some subtle changes in the net electrical activity of the brain is being picked up in this MEG. What it tells me is we're moving toward the day when we can distinguish among three types of people who come back having been traumatized and, damn, and, and injured. One is the person with traumatic brain injury, and that's it. Another is the person with post-traumatic stress disorder, and that's it. And another is the person with both. So that is a new frontier. It's very interesting. See, I, I'm, I'm very, very taken with the work of Apostolos Georgopoulos in Minneapolis. He's the first to, with his team of, of colleagues, he's the first to show that something is going on in the working of the traumatically traumatized brain. And it's there even when you're not thinking about your trauma. You can spend a minute in an MEG, and the MEG will show the difference between someone with PTSD and someone without. And it has to do with the way the neurons fire in harmony in synchronicity. And I believe we're getting at the spot, the area of the brain that is injured when you're exposed to overwhelming stimulus. And, and this is the part of PTSD that has to do with the trauma memory, with the memory that comes at you when you don't want it to, with the memory that almost has the force of an epileptic reaction. It doesn't have to do with the generalized nervousness. It doesn't have to do with the generalized lowering of the feelings of love and joy. It has to do with the core feature of PTSD, the haunting traumatic memory. And, and when I reach the point with my patient where they can tell me about something that's terribly traumatic and it doesn't cause them to go into the trauma, to have a flashback, to leave full of the trauma that they just spoke with me about. It's a bad memory, but they contain it. The memory doesn't contain them. It's when, when they no longer have a trauma memory pattern, I know they're in remission. They've, they've really come out of the PTSD. That's the core feature. That's what I think Apostolos Georgopoulos is picturing in the MEG. That's what makes it so special. All the other brain imaging work that we have is the same for a nervous person. It's the same for an obsessed person. Nobody has gotten at the trauma memory itself 
other than Georgiopoulos through the MEG.